So we've created a color version of this image here and edited it inside Luminar Neo to create this. However, now I've decided I would like to create a black and white version of this image. So what do I need to do? Well, absolutely, I could just keep adding tools to develop my edit further. However, what I'd like to do is actually work on a fresh version of this without having to worry about the memory inside my computer remembering all of these edits so far, and also just have the option of two versions, a color and a black and white. So I'm actually gonna export this as a nice high quality TIFF. So I'm in 16-bit depth. I want a color space of Adobe RGB and I want to call it Buddha Castle black and white so I can differentiate it from my color version. So now we have access to a brand new file that doesn't have any tools applied to it as such. However, it has been processed. So we have the benefit of freeing up all our computer's memory for a fresh edit. Now, the first thing that is an issue for me is the noise that we have going on in the sky. And to fix that up, if you have the extension Noiseless AI, we could use that. However, I know not all of you have that. So let's see if we can solve that problem another way. Well, develop tool that has noise reduction inside of it. So we're gonna, first of all, let's crank the luminosity denoise up and have a look what it does. And that has helped to a certain extent, but a lot of the noise is actually coming through differences in the adjacent colored pixels. And I might even crank that even higher maybe even boost it further too, because I'm really not worried about making the sky look soft, but what my concern is, is amplifying all of this noise when I convert this to black and white, you're really gonna see all that speckled detail, so I'm much happier with a softer, noiseless file. However, it's good to check what's going on in the main part of our image, because as you can see, things are taking on a bit of a surreal painterly quality, and that's not what I want for this image, I want a much more realistic look. So here's our before, and here is our after. Let me just zoom in so you might be able to see that better on YouTube. Here's our before, here's our after. We're losing a lot of detail by applying that. So this is where our masking will come in. I'm just gonna go for the AI mask option so that we can mask the sky nice and quickly. So now I can click the sky option and we've probably got the same noise going on in the mountains there, so it's worth clicking that. And if the mask isn't super accurate, I'm not too worried, but I just wanna make sure that I'm not applying it over here. So I'm just gonna to come to the erase mask option and just paint that away from there. And I'll just reduce my strength just so that I'm not applying it with full intensity over the mountains. It'll probably be difficult to see over your screen on YouTube, but here is our before. There's a lot of speckled noise going on in the sky. And here is our after, we've mostly eliminated it. However, we've left the rest of our picture nicely intact. So let's move on to our black and white conversion. As you know, we have a saturation slider that sits inside the develop tool under the color option. So you could always desaturate your image. And yes, this is creating a black and white. However, this doesn't really give us a very refined result and it's not a good way to convert to black and white. So I'll just reset that. And what I'd recommend you do instead is come to the dedicated black and white tool here, convert to black and white. And while the result does look similar, we've now got access to a lot more fine tune control. So I can grab the blue slider, for instance, which controls the sky, a lot of the water here as well. And we can actually fine tune our image based on the brightness value that we wanna put into individual colors. So this green foliage at the front here, I'm guessing if I grab the green slider and start pushing that to the right, we can lighten that ever so slightly. As to how much control you get out of these sliders will depend how saturated the color is in the original file. So I know that there's a kind of ready color in the roof here. If I grab the red slider and boost that up, or bring it down, you can see that the main section that's changing is where the sun is actually hitting that roof line. So brighter and darker, you can actually see that change going on, and you can also see the change happening in the little bus on the road as well. And if you're unsure of what effect these sliders are having, I would recommend just grab them and have a little play around. So I can boost the cyans all the way up. I'm surprised by the lightning effect that that's having on the overall photo, but guess what? I prefer darkening that down. What about the blues? What if we take that further? That's certainly giving the image a more dramatic look by dropping those blues down. And even with that noise reduction, we can still see a lot of speckled effect going on in the sky. And that is why I always say to you guys, if you can work with a raw file, it's so much better to do that. But as you know, we started with a JPEG with our initial color photo. 
and unfortunately we've got to work with this. So let me show you another tool that we can actually use to try and reduce that speckled effect. If I push the structure AI tool all the way up, you can actually see that that's intensified all of that digital noise in the sky. So what about if we take it the other way? Surely that's going to help reduce it which it absolutely is. It's also giving the clouds a very kind of painterly look as well. So what if we actually drop it to, I don't know, minus 70, something like that, and then we come and we actually just mask that in. We already have the AI masks generated for us, so we don't need to waste time with any more computation. We can just borrow that sky mask again. And if it's getting a little bit fakey, which I feel like it is, we can just get the erase tool and just take it away a little bit from where the clouds are kind of puffy. Okay, so let's have a quick look at our black and white conversion so far. Here's our color version, and here's our black and white. Here's our color, and black and white. Not bad, but I feel like I want a little bit more impact. And you may have noticed before when I grabbed the Structure AI tool and started boosting that up, that's certainly starting to accentuate the contrast in the image, particularly the local contrast. So why don't I borrow some of this? Let's have a little look at the before and after, before and after, Obviously, I don't want to apply that everywhere, so I'm going to get my brush and I'm just going to look around the image and make a call on where I think this might look good. So in the background here, I quite liked what it was doing there. I quite liked what it was doing to the building as well. And one of my favorite things to do when I'm working with a black and white is to paint in contrast, like actually really introduce new contrast into the image. And one of my favorite ways to do that would be to work with the curves tool. So if we boost the right side of the curve up here, this is brightening up the highlights, but as a consequence of putting a point on and moving up, the whole curve is moving above the line. So everything is getting brightened, but particularly where we've got the point here. But I don't really wanna brighten up the midtones and the shadows either. And so a point in the middle is gonna talk into the midtones. Any point we bring down below the curve is gonna darken things. Any point we bring above the curve is gonna brighten things. And when I say the curve, sorry, I'm talking about the 45 degree line that runs from the bottom left to the top right. If we push a point above that, things get brighter. If we pull a point below that, things get darker. I feel like the dark shadows on the building here, maybe in the foliage, are just getting pushed a little bit too far towards black, but I like what's going on in the sky here. And so this is one of those opportunities where we can actually make a change globally to the whole photo. So I can boost these shadows up and I feel like I'm getting a correction there in the shadows here, in the shadows here on the bottom left. However, I was liking what was going on in the sky. So how do I get the best of both worlds? Well, that's when it comes down to our masking again. So I'm just gonna apply this effect over the whole photo, and now I'm gonna close the develop tool down, and when I reopen it, I've got a new instance of this tool. The former edit drops into the edit section, and I'm good to go with a brand new edit. So we're gonna come into the curve section here, and any changes that I make here, I'm only going to apply them to the sky. So I'm just looking at those clouds, want to give them a little bit of a pop. And I like the idea of a dark sky at the top, as if we've used a polarizer when we photograph this. And now all I need to do is just mask this in where I want it. And just as before, I'm going to use my mask AI and select the sky option. And if I jump back into the adjustments, we can see our before and after, just with that effect of the curves applied only to the sky. Here's our before, here's our after. We can use this same technique to brighten areas up as well. So I'm thinking I'd like to actually brighten the water along here. Just have that river just popping out a little bit more. So we could use the curves tool again. Alternatively, what about if we grab enhance AI? What's that going to do for us? Well, let's have a little look. Here's our before, here's our after. It is brightening up the river. I mean, it's brightening a lot of other places as well. But again, we can come in and just mask that where we want. I could paint this in or we could alternatively Look at the mask AI option and see if it can recognize the water. And it has, it's done a really good job actually. We've got some extra elements in the background, but in terms of speed, I'm happier just to go with that and then make any corrections if I need to. Okay, let's have a little look. Here's our before, here's our after, just a nice little bit of brightening on that water. And another tool that can help us out with our black and whites actually exists in the creative section. And if you come down here and you jump into the dramatic tool, watch what happens when I grab the amount slider and start applying that. I'll double click to reset. And let's go again. You see all of that contrast that's introducing? It's probably too much for this image. However, it's pretty useful when you are working with black and white. 
and I might just want to steal a little bit pop some onto the building there maybe along the water and the bridge again to just add a little bit of attention and a little bit of focus and detail into that area now the grain that I've got going on here it is still kind of bugging me and what I could do to actually give a more uniform look through the whole photo rather than trying to keep eliminating this grain of just fighting pushing uphill against it I could actually just go with the flow and embrace a black and white grainy look and I could actually use the film grain tool which I rarely use to be honest and if I start pushing it in here you're going to think online that this just looks absolutely awful and you need to bear in mind that this is a pre-rendered visualization that you see. When you put this on in the program itself, this isn't how it's gonna look when your photo actually exports. So if I zoom into this straight away, we're gonna see that re-render and we'll now get a more accurate representation of what this film grain is gonna look like. Currently I'm at 100%, I don't want to have that much. But if we go for an amount that makes it look like it matches what was there already in the sky, or at least gives it a little bit of a more harmonious look, so here was our before, not really liking what was going on with the sky, and you can also see the grain in the hillside in the bottom left there. And when I let go, we get that film grain look applied universally, and that just creates a bit more cohesion through the whole photo. So let's have a quick look at our before and our after. Here's our color version that we created in the previous tutorial that I'll link to at the end, and here is our black and white version. Let's have a quick review as to how we made that up. The first tool we applied was the noise reduction to try and clean up the sky. It did an okay job. Next we converted the image using the dedicated black and white tool that enables us to change the brightness values in the photo based on the actual color values themselves. Still feeling like there was a bit too much digital noise in the sky, I applied this structure AI with a negative amount just to try and soften up that sky a little bit more. Liking what structure was doing with a positive application, I then masked that in just in a few areas just to give the image a little bit more pop than what it had before. From there we looked at one of the keys of black and white editing and that is controlling your contrast. And the best way to do that that I find isn't with the smart contrast slider, but of course you can do that if you want to, but I prefer to use the curves tool. So we started with a classic contrast increasing S curve, and then I just boosted up the shadows because I felt like they were getting a little too dark, and I brought that point back up. I then did a little bit of localized contrast control with another curves application, this time applying it only into the sky, helping to give just a little bit more drama to the image. I then used Enhance AI to brighten up the river. I could have used Curves again and boosted them up, but there are so many ways to get things done inside Luminar Neo that it's just worth playing around. So Enhance AI, a nice quick boost of that, and then using the Mask AI just to select the water in the scene. Nice and quick, good results. I then applied the Dramatic Filter, which is another really great tool for adding contrast to your scene, but this time, again, I just painted it in specifically where I wanted. Just a little pop on the front of the building, and a little more interest added to the river as well. And then as a final touch, I've just applied a texture of film grain over the top of the whole image, which currently on screen looks like it's too much. However, when this gets exported, it will be re-rendered with a bit more accuracy and it will look better than what we see in this current preview. So as a final look, here was our before, here was our after, before and after. And if you'd like to learn a technique for really mastering your black and white editing, so you can craft the light and take your photos from this and turn them into this. Then you want to check out the video that I've got on screen right now. I look forward to seeing you in that one.